Diana Taurasi was bullying Caitlin Clark before she even got to the WNBA. But after their very first encounter, the WNBA legend is a fan of the future GOAT. And we're going to see exactly how Caitlin Clark proved herself to Diana Taurasi in their very first matchup and showed that not only can she rise up to Taurasi's level, she can eventually transcend the current GOAT and be the greatest women's basketball player ever. Man, you just had to be there when Caitlin Clark was destroying college basketball. She was kicking ass and putting asses in seats. Don't get me wrong, people like Kelsey Plum, Elena Del Don, Aja Wilson, all great players who are holding the women's professional league up. Sabrina Ionescu, of course, broke Steph Curry's three-point contest record and massively helped get eyes on the women's game when she and Steph went 1v1. We also can't forget that Brittany Griner trade, the most well-known trade in basketball history when the 6'9 big was traded for the merchant of death. <laughs> but seriously, that's all great. But the Iowa Caitlin Clark era was on a whole nother level. All eyes were tuned in as Caitlin Clark was picked first overall by the Indiana Fever. Everyone and their mother saw how big of an impact Caitlin Clark was going to have for the WNBA. More exposure, more money. Maybe they even turn a profit for the first time in the league's history. All good, right? Well, not quite. One party seems oddly antagonistic to Caitlin Clark. Ironically, the one party that will benefit the most with the exposure that she's brought in. That party, of course, being the WNBA players themselves. And none other than the current WNBA GOAT Diana Taurasi was a part of that discourse. What will the league have in store for them when they get there? Look, SVP, um, <laughs> reality is coming. Okay. <laughs> you know, there's, there's levels to this thing. And that's just life. We all went through it. Of course. Um, and you see it on the NBA side. And you're going to see it on this side where, you know, they, you look superhuman playing against 18-year-olds, but you're going to come with some grown women that have been playing professional basketball for a long time. Right. People can interpret it as Taurasi warning Caitlin that the competition will be way tougher. And to be fair, she is correct. Yes, it's not a bunch of teenagers and early 20s women on the floor. The WNBA is full of tough seasoned pros who are the literal best in the world the top 1% of their craft, who travel the world and fight in other leagues in the offseason. But like, yeah, obviously, Caitlyn knows that. More encouragement and less negativity would have been nice, particularly because of how Clark looked up to Taurasi when she was young. She was probably one of the first women's basketball players I really grew up idolizing. I mean, no NBA player tried to antagonize Wemby. No current player said that Zion's game wouldn't translate to the league. The closest that we've got to the hostility that Clark got was LeBron's old Cavs teammates, downplaying his greatness and abilities. We have better players than him in his position already on our team, bro. I don't think you can really just bring a high school player in and really just think your team gonna really turn around like that. But anyway, it wasn't too deep into the season that Clark and her Indiana Fever would have a shot against Diana Taurasi, Brittany Griner, and the Phoenix Mercury. And so there it was, June 30, Mercury versus Fever, Caitlin Clark against Diana Taurasi and Brittany Griner, round one, lights, camera, action. Taurasi and Griner get it going early, playing the two women game to perfection. It's Wallace. Taurasi with the lay, got it up, 14% from the field to start the first quarter here. Taurasi off the Griner screen. Griner with a nice catch and bucket. Nice dipsy do from Dow Rossi. To Rossi driving the closeout. Oh, a little bit of jelly at the rim. The fever getting run over. And it's not helping that Caitlin Clark was turning the ball over. Cloud this time on Clark. Pocket pass goes right to Tarasi. But then there she is. Rebecca Allen goes under the screen. Caitlin decided that it's time. And then she just slings it. Swish. Wow. Clark doesn't waste any time. You see the impact that her limitless range has here. Wheeler quickly up court. Boston running the floor for the layup. Because she hit that deep three earlier, Allen was forced to close out hard at her feint. Clark attacks the closeout, knows that Boston is cutting to the rim, and that's an easy transition bucket. Now it's on. Caitlin Clark is rolling, showing off her playmaking chops. As she uses the pick and roll, sees Griner blitzing her, leaving a small, small window for a fantastic pocket pass that finds her target. Excellent point skill from Caitlin. A little bit like Taurasi herself, 
And now, look at this. Sophie Cunningham is sticking to Clark like super glue. But like what we've been seeing, Clark knows how to take advantage of whatever the defense gives her. And so, she uses the pick, which is extremely effective against close quarter defenders. Clark puts Cunningham in jail. Reiner is so afraid of the lob that she gives up the easy layup to Clark and one. And to Rossi seeing all this and figures it's time to reintroduce herself. Make the requisite adjustments and give yourself some break. She's a shooter too, and she uses all reliable again. Advantage on the block. And you, you maybe Phoenix might bring a double to that to try to help Cloud. But when you move, make your move. The grinder pick and roll, and it works as always. She establishes the Mercury's lead going into halftime. But after halftime, Caitlin Clark decides that it's time to really introduce herself to her idol. But as she's staring Taurasi in the eyes ready to go to work, Taurasi signals the switch and avoids the Clark matchup. This leaves Clark some room to gallop and gain momentum. Her guard tries to keep up. Clark leaves her behind with a couple of hezies. Easy layup. Fantastic read of the defense by Clark, as well as this one. As she sees her shooter all alone in transition, Clark displays her vision, and the shot is money. And look who was late in the closeout and missed her matchup in transition. But Clark just keeps on going. 19 seconds left on the shot clock, but she sees her defender go under the high screen. And that, my friends, is a psychotic tendency that only guys like Steph Curry and Damian Lillard have. Think Taurasi is starting to see the light by now? I should hope so. Her teammates definitely see it, because look at this. The gravity, the aura that this girl has. Her gravity is attracting three defenders the moment she passes the halfway line. Even the great Diana Taurasi has her eyes glued to Clark, completely ignoring her assignment, allowing Christy Wallace to cut inside. And that's an extremely easy find for Caitlyn. That, ladies and gentlemen, is why Caitlin Clark is so damn dangerous. She's got that perfect combination of limitless range, playmaking ability, and the sheer audacity to make these incredible plays and shoot those long bombs. In a more technical sense, her ability to shoot forces teams to double or even triple up on her, especially in transition. And it just leaves her teammates with the easiest shots ever. Because if they don't try and close out on Clark, she'll most likely sling that one for her trademark threes. And you see here how good of a playmaker she is and how easy she makes it for her teammates. She immediately passes out of the blitz, meaning that the Fever instantly have a four on three situation. They just move around and pass to the wide open Mitchell, who drains the three and gives the Fever their first lead. Even when Diana Taurasi tried to wrestle some control back with this beautiful three, that is making a difference for Indiana. Taurasi! The Caitlin Clark train is pretty damn hard to stop once it starts going. By this point, the game was back and forth, lead change after lead change. Wheeler on the drive, off glass, got it. Talk about Copper, just two of 14. Tarasi one more to a wide open Cunningham, cash out. But the Mercury established a lead with a small run, and it looks like they've gotten back control of the game. So as the go-to girl of the team, it's up to Caitlin Clark to rally the troops and lead the team to victory. And what does she do? She made great play after great play. Note that these kickouts materialize because the shooter's defender helped one pass away. And those reads, like we mentioned earlier, are too easy for Clark to make. With a couple of buckets from Kelsey Mitchell, the underdog fever gets the win. Mitchell, foul and one! Mitchell for the lead, the mini committee. Great performances from Aaliyah Boston, Kelsey Mitchell, and of course, Caitlin Clark. Clark really showed why she's the worthy heir to Diana Taurasi's throne. 15 points, 12 assists, and 9 rebounds from the Spitfire rookie. But that doesn't really show how much of an impact she has. Remember all those open looks her teammates got because of her gravity? Because of her shooting? Well, those two long threes were the only threes she made that game. Two of ten from three. And yet, despite the poor shooting numbers and her known playmaking prowess, the defense showed her so much respect that they were double and triple teaming her as soon as she crossed the halfway line. And this respect was reflected by none other than Diana Taurasi herself. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. Uh, you know, what Caitlin's been able to do um, in her short career so far has just been, uh, 
nothing short of remarkable. Um, and, you know, the one thing that I really love about her, she loves the game. Um, you can tell she's put the work in. Um, and even, you know, throughout, you know, her short WNBA career, uh, it's been a lot of pressure, a lot of things thrown at her. And, uh, you know, she keeps showing up and keeps getting better every single game. So um, her future is, is super bright. Maybe it was a blessing in disguise that Tarasi said those things about Clark. Maybe it caused Clark to go out and be such a menace. Or maybe Caitlyn's just that much of a stone-cold killer that she still hoops despite her childhood hero seemingly trying to down her. Whatever it is, the white mamba has definitely turned into a Caitlyn Clark believer now, too. But that's what happens, like they did to Kobe and MJ and LeBron. However much they try to talk down and bully Clark, one way or another, they will become fans. 